This is a story about the Ibanez IMG 2010, also known as the X-ING. I don't know why. I don't know what X-ING actually means. But it was the most advanced MIDI guitar controller ever made. This guitar was built on the Roland 24-pin technology. It was made between 1985 and 1986. Now here was my guitar. I had the complete package including the signal converter, the foot controller, and I even had a Roland GR700 guitar synthesizer. A wonderful package altogether, but at some point I decided I wanted to get rid of all this 24-pin technology and upgrade to something more modern like the Fishman Triple Play, which is a wireless MIDI controller system that can be attached to any guitar. Now I really didn't want to modify my guitar because it was a beautiful example of the IMG 2010. I didn't want to take out the hex pickup or do any damage to the guitar itself. So I just got rid of all that 24 pin technology and I got rid of a guitar I really liked. Then one day on eBay I found this poor beast. It was in sad shape. If you compare my guitar to this guitar immediately you can see the pickups are different. Somebody added a Strat pickup in the middle. You can see all the knobs are missing. Nothing there but a single knob and a couple of switches. They even gutted out the MIDI electronics that really made the guitar the guitar controller that it was. It's a pretty sad looking beast and it was dirty and it smelled. So I knew that it was going to take some work but it was the guitar that I wanted because I really wanted this guitar to be my MIDI controller. The perfect example for me to add the Fishman to. So I started by taking everything apart, cleaning everything that was there. You can see the pocket in the middle has been drilled and chiseled out and when they did that they chipped up the body really bad and glued all those little pieces back in. It's a mess. Now also over here you can see some cracks in the body. It was probably dropped at some point but it really didn't do any major harm to it as an instrument it just cracked the body. And then in this area where I took out the hex pickup there was going to be an open pocket left. There would be no place for me to put the Fishman pickup. So that was going to be a problem. I was going to have to make inserts to fit into all these open cavities to clean it up. Best part was it came with a pair of Seymour Duncan 59 Les Paul copies. These are excellent pickups and I'm really happy to have them. So I started by opening up Autodesk Fusion 360 to create a solid model. I basically scaled everything off of the body to create this model. I had to figure out how big these cavities were going to be and then also model the inserts that were going to fit into those cavities. Then I had to create the toolpath so that I could machine away any of the material that wasn't needed to make it smooth and consistent so the new inserts would fit in properly. After machining out the pockets, I was going to have to machine out the inserts themselves. So I got myself a couple of blocks of maple and I decided to make these inserts first so that I could use them as a gauge once I machined the body. So there you can see the inserts and the cavities cut into the body so that I could make sure that they fit before I took the guitar off the machine. And they fit beautifully. So with that done, the next thing to do was to cut down the block so there'd be less material to have to cut away. I also left a little gap underneath so that I wouldn't be cutting, you know, too close to the body. Although I did want to cut these inserts so that they did fit flush with the actual body of the guitar. So here you can see it cutting away the excess material to get it down flush even with the body of the guitar.
they came out pretty nice. I mean, that is machined right up to the top surface. So the next thing to do was to take the finish off. With the help of a heat gun, I was able to scrape it off pretty quickly, and I could see what a mess it was going to be. You could see where the inserts were. You could see the damage to the body. You could see how it's made up of multiple blocks. So putting a clear coat finish on this wasn't going to be an option. Even though the back looked pretty good, the top was a mess. I decided then I was going to work on the electronics to make sure that the electronics fit before I started painting it so I wouldn't do any damage later on. So I get the electronics fit, hung up the body, and got it ready to paint. Now I wanted to use as many things as I already had laying around, and I had this can of copper colored paint that creates a hammered copper looking finish. And I think the hammered copper looking finish actually looks pretty cool on this guitar. I'm pretty happy the way it came out. I put in a little grounding lug using a, a nine pin D shaped connector so that I could ground all the electronics to a central terminal. Then I was able to fit all the electronics back into the guitar without having, you know, to fool around too much to get it all to work. It pretty much just dropped right in. And then once it was in place, I could put the back cover on and then secure all the rest of the hardware, getting everything fitted properly. Now, one of the things I did going from the grounding terminal is I put in this little grounding lug. It sticks up just a couple of thousandths so that when I put the bridge on, I make good contact so I don't have to run a wire from the grounding terminal and screw that wire to the bridge itself. I get a good ground automatically. I also added a kill switch. I had a bunch of these. I thought it would be interesting to have. If you've ever seen Buckethead play, he uses a kill switch. It adds an interesting sound. Then I added the bridge. Everything had been cleaned, oiled, put back together. Now I did have to modify the bridge and cut away this front section because that's where the triple play pickup is going to mount. The same place where the old hex pickup used to mount. I had taken the neck off and done some work on the frets to get them all cleaned up. They were kind of a mess. They came out pretty good though. There's still some life left in this neck and these frets. So got all that secured and put back together. And at that point, the guitar was pretty much finished as a guitar. I could put the strings on, check everything out, and see how it worked. And it came out pretty nice. Now, the guitar neck, the back lacquer is still black. So you've got black and white for the pickups, the hardware, the neck, and you've got the copper-colored body. And altogether, I think it looks pretty good. Then I added the triple play to it mounting the pickup and finding somewhere to secure the triple play itself. Although I may move that, I'm not really happy where it is. I'm working on something to add to that. And the Ibanez 2010 is reborn into the Ibanez IMG 2021, the triple play wireless MIDI guitar controller, the guitar of the future. So this 35 year old guitar is getting a new lease on life. It was a sad old beast before, but now she's ready for the next 35 years.